So communicating what we want the drywall to look like, what we want the finish to look like, is difficult for people, but there's a system, okay? There is a numbered system, zero through five, for communicating what kind of finish you want, okay? Contractors, um, architects, drafters, should be fluent in this form of drywall communication. Okay? This is how we convey to the drywall contractor what we want the house to look like. Okay? Um, and we're going to talk about some different kinds of finishes and textures and stuff like that here in a little bit, but I do want to go over this chart because this is really important. And this is how the drywall contractor knows how to bid the job. Okay. This is the level of expectation. So if we talk about, I want a level zero finish, that just means the drywall is hung, okay? You can't actually do that though, okay? Legally, you have to tape all the joints, okay? So I guess the only place that this would come into play is if you're saying, um, how's the job going? Great, we're at level zero, okay? I still don't know why you would say that other than just we got the, the rock hung. But level one, this is what we would call a fire tape, okay? The drywall's up, the joints have been taped, okay? If we take it up to a level two, the joints have been taped, we've put a coat of mud over the tape, and we've also spotted the screws one time, okay? Let's take it up to a level three. We've done a second coat of mud, over the tape, we've done a second coat of mud over the screws. Okay. This is a decent garage finish. Okay. Fire tape's kind of lame, it doesn't look very nice. If you can take it up to a level three, which isn't that much more work, it's going to look a lot nicer in the garage. Now, let's get, and then I guess the other thing about level three, if you're doing a, an aggressive spray texture or hand texture, maybe you only need to take the drywall up to level three and it'll look fine. If you're doing a lighter texture or maybe a hand texture like an imperfect smooth or something like that, maybe you want to take it up to a level four. Okay, but if, if you're just going to put some really gnarly hand texture on something, level three is good enough, okay? That texture is going to conceal any imperfections that you would ever see, okay? Let's take it up to level four, right? Actually, recently one of the drywall contractors called level four country smooth, which I thought was kind of funny. But when we take it up to level four, we're covering the screws for a third time, we're sanding everything, and we're priming it, okay? So this would be what we'd call a poor man's smooth wall, or like that guy said, a country smooth, okay? It's not going to be the smoothest finish you can get, but taking it up to level five is a significantly higher level of finish, okay? So if we take it up to a level five finish, this is smooth wall, okay? This is... Um, as smooth as it gets, all right? And what you've done, you know, we've covered the screws, we've sanded everything, we've primed everything. Then we're gonna come back and we're going to completely cover every square inch of wall surface with drywall compound. We're gonna skim coat everything out, okay? And what you do is you get your joint compound, preferably topping compound. You're gonna thin it up with some water, okay? Mix it up. And the way I learned this is you want it so thin that it barely stays on your trowel, okay? The reason for that is it's going to lay down so flat, it's going to completely fill all the pores of the drywall. And, and I would say you probably don't want to prime this yet, okay? If we're taking it up to level five, don't prime it yet, but definitely sand everything, take it up to level four. We're going to skim coat it, and that's going to fill all of the 
paper with drywall mud. Okay. What can happen with a level four or someone who doesn't really know what they're doing if you don't completely skim out the entire wall and then you prime it, you'll get this phenomenon called flashing. Okay, and you'll see that the areas of the wall that didn't have any mud on them absorbed the paint differently than the places that did have drywall mud on them. Okay, so if you're, if you're really going to take it to that high level of finish, you need to skim everything out. Okay, and it's putting mud on the wall, taking the mud off. Okay, some people put it on with a roller and then scrape it off with a drywall knife. They have a, a product, um, I forget what the thing's called, but you can buy it in a bucket and you can spray it on the wall, you can roll it on the wall, um, and, and essentially you're gonna scrape it back off. But what you've done is you've filled all the pores of that paper face drywall with joint compound so that when you do prime it, everything takes the primer the same. And you don't see that flashing and that like diff different like light hitting it in different ways you'll see and i've seen this before when they've done a bad job of this you'll see every single tape joint okay it flashes it pops out of the wall okay um there's a lot of sanding involved with this also okay um, if you want to take it to this level of finish and and i would just say like homeowners think that this is the easy one smooth wall I'll just make it smooth. That'll be easy. I'll save you the trouble of having to apply a texture to it. Okay. But that's actually very wrong. Okay. This is the hardest finish to achieve because it has to be perfect. Any little imperfection, you will see it. Okay. So like I said, you're taking it all the way up to level four. Then you're skim coating the entire thing. And then you're going around with a headlamp. And a little flashlight and a little sanding block and you've blacked out the windows you've made it completely dark and you're going around with these lights and you're looking at every square inch of wall and sanding every square inch of wall with a little sanding sponge or block of paper or whatever okay you're sanding out all the imperfections you're circling any low spots with a pencil and you're coming back and touching them up with more mud and sanding them again and then you're priming everything and then you're coming back and you're looking at it again and you're fixing any little imperfections. Because like I said, everything shows up when it's this smooth. Okay, So that's a level five finish. That's going to be your highest level of finish. Okay, These are some spray finishes that I kind of want to talk about. This one's called orange peel. These are the two most common spray finishes. I'll, I'll just say that. This is called orange peel. Okay it looks like the surface of an orange, okay? This is kind of a lighter spray texture as opposed to this knockdown, which is giant blobs of mud shot onto the wall, okay? You can buy these textures in a can if you're doing a patch, okay? You're not gonna, if you're doing a whole house, you're not gonna buy cases of spray texture in a can. This is for like patchwork. And it's got a little dial on the end of the can that adjusts the aperture, okay? It adjusts the opening on that can. And so the bigger the opening, the bigger blobs of mud it's going to throw out on the wall, okay? The smaller opening, the finer little pieces of mud it's going to shoot on the wall, okay? You might need to be careful about, you know, you might, depending on your orange peel texture, how thick it is, if you're doing a really light orange peel, you might need to take the walls to a level four surface, okay? If you're doing a really heavy orange peel, level three is probably fine. If you're doing a knockdown, level three is probably fine, okay? This is this is like uh, a Jackson Pollock painting, okay? Somebody just came in and just started throwing mud on the wall, okay? And actually, there is a technique here. You shoot this on, you let it set up a little bit, and then you knock it down with a trowel. Okay, it goes on like spitballs, literally, and then you come back and you knock it down with your trowel after it's set up for a minute. Um, big drywall contractors, they actually have like a spray rig. They have a trailer that they tow around and hundreds of feet of hose and a big um, 
spray nozzle on the end and they'll dump bags of drywall texture powder into that spray rig and they'll fill it full of water. That spray rig will mix all the texture mud together and pump it through the hose and you'll just walk around the house just shooting texture on the walls. Okay. Here's a couple of hand texture examples. For the record, I'm, I'm a level five kind of guy. I just like smooth walls, especially the kind of houses that I like. Um, smooth wall finish is kind of the classic look, trying to mimic that plaster look, okay, that smooth plaster look. Uh, I do like this imperfect smooth. It's almost like you're skimming the wall out, except you leave these little pockets in here. So it's an imperfect smooth. It gives it kind of this like old world stucco look, okay? Um, skip trial is a hand texture where, and I, I'll try and get a video up of some skip trial so people can see how that's done, but you load up a big knife with drywall mud and you just kind of drag it across the wall and it skips across the wall and leaves little blobs of mud all over the place. Okay, so you just kind of fan drywall mud over the wall and kind of leave little blobs. It's kind of like doing a, a larger scale knockdown texture. Okay, that's called a skip draw. Um, the advantage of a hand texture is it looks, I think it looks nicer than a spray texture. Okay, spray textures just kind of feel cheap, I guess, to some people. Um, hand texture gives it a nicer look. It's a, it gives it a unique look also. Um, and then also, I would say, especially if you're just doing like a room, it would be faster to apply a hand texture than it would be to set up a spray rig or buy, you know, set up a hopper and blast a bunch of drywall all over the place. It's also a lot cleaner. Um, so there, there are certainly advantages, okay? Um, time, scale, preference, okay, would be your considerations there. Um, I'd like everybody to watch this video. Um, this is a very friendly Canadian guy. And he goes through all of the drywall finishing steps, okay, and talks about the tools you're going to want to use, talks about fanning out the butt joints over a broader surface um, to feather them out so you, you, your eyes aren't drawn to it. Um, it's, it's a very good video that I encourage everybody to watch. Um, so just to kind of wrap this up, I'm, I'm going to summarize some key points here. This is called wall finish, but for what it's worth, we're going to do drywall, gypsum board on everything. And 99% of the time, the finished surface of the house is going to be gypsum board. Okay. We're going to use 5 8 thick drywall for the ceiling. That's going to go on first. We're going to use generally half inch thick drywall for the walls. Okay. That's going to help support the ceiling. If we're in areas of high humidity, maybe we want to use green board or purple board or fiberglass face drywall, but that's still no substitute for a properly ventilated space. Okay. For fire resistance, we're going to use type X, type X drywall. Finishing the drywall and think about those different, um, levels of finish. Okay. Look over those again. But we're going to use a combination of tape and joint compound to both conceal the fasteners and conceal the panel edges. Okay, we want it to look like one surface. Okay, we don't, we don't want to see joints. We don't want to see screws and nails. Okay, um, and then just think about the different types of, like, where, where would we use setting type joint compound, hot mud? Where would we use taping mud okay where would we use topping compound okay i think there are there are a lot of options um that make the job easier okay and then again if you're just using if you're just doing a room or something buy a box of plus three use that for everything okay so i hope you've enjoyed this um thank you very much and please email me if you have any questions